John Capel is in his element. The spring and summer have passed and he comes alive in his favourite seasons, autumn and winter. It's just my favourite time of year. Um, I like the atmosphere and I like the early, the early dark, which you can enjoy. Um, I like the bareness of the trees, um, the bareness of the landscape. It just seems much more extreme at that time of year. He puts this energy into his paintings. This work, called The Supper, has evolved from a very different beginning. Um, well, I always work from an abstract. Um, I, I try and deal with the composition first and how it's going to work as an abstract. Um, I work with the dark and the light and then the general shape, which is going to hold the composition in some way. Um, I always work with very strong colours to, to, to begin with. Um, I always start on a, a very bright red board. Um, I add strong colours on top of that as well. I mean, because I work, well, the painting ends up being black and white. There's a lot of colour underneath, which I hope comes through. Um, the the, the colours then tend to make the whites very intense and the, 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 the blacks very dark. So I build up a lot of strong colour first. Um, some allow more colour through, but generally they end up quite monotone, but there is a lot of colour in there. John works from a small studio space full of artefacts at his home in Glastonbury. Self-taught, he can't remember a time when he didn't paint. His admiration of other artists is reserved for those of the past, the likes of Samuel Palmer, Stanley Spencer, Paul Nash and Leonora Carrington. I, I love being a painter, it's wonderful. I mean, it's I am in a, a small bubble, but I like that very much. Um, I like being isolated a lot of the time. I like to be on my own. Um, it suits me very well indeed to be a painter. John draws on his surroundings both inside and outside. The imposing presence of Glastonbury Tor is visible from his home. And it's this link with the countryside he's had since birth. Um, the Mendips is, is a place that a lot of my family has always come from for, for many generations and it was partly where I was raised as well. Um, it's a lovely landscape, it's very bleak um, in many ways but it's also very beautiful. It's got lots of variety. It's a place that I, I love and it's filled with stories that I love as well so it's, it's been a, a, a strong source of inspiration up until now which is wonderful. John paints about what I write about which is a sort of very deep sense of the relationship between the land of Somerset and the people of Somerset. And that includes a sort of contemporary feel of the relationship between the people and the land, but it also stretches way back into history. It's a sort of timeless approach. On the surface, the characters John paints are beautiful portraits of everyday life. The heavy woolen clothing, the whitewashed houses, horses and farming tools. But beyond this, he tells stories relating to folklore and historical writings. I do tend to do a lot of research. Um, an awful lot goes into it, really. I mean, but that's all part of who I am, I hope, as a painter as well. I mean, it's all part of what I draw into the paintings, but it's also part of myself. But it's a subject that interests me. I uh, love, love crows, love, love the owls. I mean, they're also great kind of birds of omen as well. So we look to those animals to try and divine what's happening, whether it's the weather or our own lives. So very important to me. I think what comes from his paintings is a sense of the relationship between the people and the landscape a relationship between a painter and a landscape and I think that they're also able to see that it's about Englishness, that it's celebrating uh, a history of Englishness and he's taking a very small geographical area and exploring it incredibly thoroughly. Today, John's come to take in the atmosphere in nearby Loxley Woods. It'll soon be dusk, his favourite time of day, when as light fuses into darkness, reality gives way to the unconscious world. Wherever you go, there's, there's always inspiration. Everywhere is different. Um, even the same place can be very different at different times of day, so it's always nice to go to a place and understand that, and then you, you have something to work from when you're back in the studio. That's very important. 
I think there's no limit to what John can do and there's no limit to the people who are going to buy his work and love his work and it's just so exciting to know him and, and to know the work. Um, I would like to think that people take from my paintings perhaps a, a, a simpler sense of life and also a, a deeper sense of life as well where we look for meanings in our landscape and our environment and, and stories as well. As long as people find something and if they find their own messages that's fine by me I think people should look at paintings and, and find something within themselves in it as well so it doesn't matter if they don't get entirely what I wanted to say as long as they find something in it which is meaningful to them. John started showing at the John Martin Gallery in the year 2000 and has attracted an international following. Admirers are drawn to the beauty and originality of his work, which conveys deep-seated universal messages and transcends the passage of time.